Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. And in this video, we are going to talk about gibberellic acid as a hormone. What is gibberellic acid? How gibberellic acid works? What is the gibberellic acid's occurrence in plants? What are the functions of gibberellic acid? And many more things about gibberellic acid. So let's start to talk about the gibberellic acid. So very first thing is gibberellic acid production or gibberellin production. How it's done. There are uh, the, the, the features of the gibberellic acid production is that it is, it is present in young tissues as well as uh, young tissues of the root. So basically gibberellic acid production, the location of the gibberellic acid production is always young roots. Okay? Second thing is that it is also found in the germinating seeds. These are the two places where the gibberellic acid is found in higher concentration is the young root tissue of the plant and germinating seeds of the plant as well as developing shoot tissues but less than that is present in the uh, root and germinating seed. It's all it's also found in embryo and production increases in the dark. This is another important feature about gibberellic acid because a dark condition increases the production of gibberellic acid. Okay? And if you look at here this place in the, uh, the like newly growing root, uh, the germinating seed, these are generally present in the dark condition. So, uh, they tend to increase in the amount. The synthesis of gibberellic acid is done from acetyl CoA which is very common intermediate we all know about it. Okay? So, let us look at this animation explaining how exactly gibberellic acid is formed in a plant cell particularly in these different locations in the plant cell. Now let us talk about the gibberellin biosynthesis pathway. Plant cells produce the G8-12 or gibberellic acid 12 as the primary precursor of gibberellin. This G8-12 will be utilized in plant cell cytoplasm to make many different varieties of gibberellins. So let us see the gibberellin synthesis pathway. The gibberellin synthesis pathway in plants involved different locations in the plant cell, plastid, endoplasmic reticulum, particularly the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the cytoplasm. The process begins in the plastid, then move to the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then finishes off in the cytoplasm. So let's begin. It start with the precursor that is isopentyl pyrophosphate IPP which is a 5 carbon compound and this is modified into dimethylyl diphosphate or DMAPP which is also a 5 carbon compound. Now we will see the association of dimethyl like diphosphate or DMAPP is association with IPP and they will make a polymerization there and the number of carbon will start to increase via this process. So isopentyl pyrophosphate IPP which is 5 carbon compound will associate with dimethylyl diphosphate or DMAPP and now they will form a 10 carbon geranyl diphosphate or GPP. Then comes another isopentyl pyrophosphate and it will associate with the geranyl diphosphate and now they will become 15 carbon compound farnesyl diphosphate or FPP. Then comes another isopentyl pyrophosphate and associate with the farnesyl diphosphate and now they will become a 20 carbon compound geranyl geranyl diphosphate or GGPP and this GGPP will be further converted into ENT copalyl diphosphate by an enzyme copalyl diphosphate synthase CPP which is found inside the plastid of the plants. And this ENT copalyl diphosphate will be further converted into ENT chlorine by an enzyme known as chlorine synthase which is also found in the plastids of the plant cell. Now this ENT chlorine is ready to be transported inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum and this ENT chlorine inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum will be converted into ENT chlorinoic acid by the enzyme chlorine oxidase. So simple oxidation reaction done in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the enzyme chlorine oxidase is present in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now this ENT chlorinoic acid will be further oxidized by the enzyme chlorinoic acid oxidase or KAO into gibberellic acid 12 or GA12 which is known as the primary source of gibberellin produced by the plant cell. And once this GA12 is produced in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it is ready to go and move out of this endoplasmic reticulum inside the cytosol. 
it will move inside cytosol and then further modification of the G8 will, will be done and will get different varieties of gibberellins like GA1, GA2, GA53, GA20 and so many more varieties of gibberellins in the plant cells involved in specific activities. Alright, I believe you have a clear idea about the gibberellic acid production or gibberellin production in plants. So now we are going to see the function of gibberellin. What are the gibberellins function in a plant? It stimulate elongation. Let me take a different color. It stimulate elongation. Elongation of what? Elongation of cell. Cell elongation. So growth of the cell, expansion of the cell. How exactly they will expand the cell? Obviously very similar method to that of the cytokinin's response that is increasing the plasticity of the cell wall by increasing the water retention and pressure to the cell wall. Flowering in the biennial plants is also done by gibberellin. Break the seed dormancy. Parthenocarpic fruit development can be done with the gibberellin. Induction of the sex expression by gibberellin stimulates the germination of pollen, stimulate the root growth and it breaks the seed dormancy helps in the breaking helps in breaking seed dormancy and particularly gibberellic acid is a very crucial hormone in plant that will help in breaking the seed dormancy delay in the senescence leaf senescence and plant senescence and stimulates alpha amylase production in germinating seed and this is the major role stimulating the production of alpha amylase and many other enzymes particularly the alpha amylase enzyme during germination of the seeds because this alpha amylase enzyme will degrade will break down the stored carbohydrate in the endosperm which will provide the nutrients to the developing embryo for the growth that's what is very very important stimulate the internodal development so if you look at this plant uh, these are the different nodes the internodal means this region is known as the internodal section inter internode internodal section this internodal section is regulated okay now we want to talk about the gibberellin signaling pathway gibberellic acid signaling allows the plant cells to grow and expand now without gibberellin the plants may be dwarf with proper gibberellin percentage and concentration the plants are of normal height so let's talk about gibberellin signaling to understand gibberellin signaling, let's first talk about the different components of the gibberellin signaling pathway. And like every signaling pathway, there must be a ligand, a receptor, some inhibitors and the gibberellin response genes. So we'll start with the ligand. Gibberellic acid itself acts as a ligand for this signaling pathway. Then we have a re re receptor. In this case, the receptor is DELA receptor which is also known as DELA repressor. The receptor for gibberellic acid here acts as a repressor of the signaling pathway. And this DELA repressor has a DELA domain and a grass domain. Then comes the example of this repressor. In rice, the example of DELA repressor known as SLR1 while in Arabidopsis, the examples are GAI and RGA. The full forms are pretty easy to find in Google. Now comes the target repressor and this repressor targets are phytochrome interacting factor that is PIF as well as the molecular chaperones that are present in the plant cell. Those are the targets of this repressor, of this DELA repressor. And then comes the transcription factors. In this case, GA insensitive dwarf 1 protein or GID 1 protein and 26S proteasome complex. So, these are the components involved in the process of gibberellic acid signaling. Okay, so now you will see what happens in the absence of gibberellic acid. Normally, what happens is that the nucleus contains the regulatory region and gibberellic acid specific response genes, which will ultimately make proteins, will regulate the responses of gibberellic acid. Now, normally, when everything is fine, when there is no repressor, the gibberellic acid specific genes will be transcribed into the specific mRNA, will be trans transported to the cytosol and will be translated into their respective proteins. But when there is gibberellic acid absence, when there is no gibberellic acid present in the plant cell, then this DELA repressor which is there present inside the nucleus, it goes inside the nucleus and this DELA repressor will go 
and associate itself with GID. GID1 or the transcription factor responsible for the GA specific gene transcription will be inhibited by the DELA repressor here. So once DELA repressor is associated with GID1, it inhibits GID1. And then this DELA repressor binds to the regulatory region and what it does, it, it put a stop to the GA specific gene transcription. This is a situation when there is no gibberellic acid present. But now when there is gibberellic acid present, when there is a gibberellic acid, then this gibberellic acid directly go inside the nucleus. And here the gibberellic acid will bind to the GID1, more new GID1s, not that one which are already bound to the DELA, even uh, some which are bound to the DELA. Now this gibberellic acid once associated with the GID1, then it adds another protein from F box that is SCF1. This SCF1 acts as an F box complex protein and these proteins are involved in the polyubiquitination of target proteins and causes the 26S proteasome mediated degradation of the protein. So once the GA1 associates itself with GID1 and SCF1, then they in recruit a lot of ubiquitin to the DELA repressor. So DELA repressor will be polyubiquitinated and as the DELA repressor is polyubiquitinated then this DELA repressor will be degraded utilizing the 26S proteasome complex and as a result there is a destruction of the DELA repressor and once the destruction of the DELA repressor is done then we can say that GID1 is free to interact to the receptor and regulatory site of the GA specific genes and as a result the GA specific gene transcription can begin. Okay, and the GA specific GA response mRNA, the gibberellic acid response elements mRNA will be produced in the nucleus, will be transferred to the cytoplasm and will be translated into their distant proteins. And that's how the gibberellic acid signaling ultimately relay in presence of gibberellic acid. So gibberellic acid acts to turn on the signaling and the absence of gibberellic acid causes the turn off the gibberellic acid signaling. This is all about the ethylene, uh, this is all about the gibberellin functions. So we have talked about gibberellin acid uh, properties, gibberellin synthesis, signaling and the gibberellin functions. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you.